Recently I talked about improving the graphics and sound of DOS games emulated through DOSBox, using Interplay's underrated The Two Towers RPG. The results were a significant improvement, but there's still one area that I regularly chat about in the comments of my videos and that's the processor. DOSBox emulates every aspect of a DOS gaming experience. Unless you're a fan of the smell of old beige cases and specific peripherals of course. Mmm, clicky. This also means that it emulates the processor type and speed behind the system. In the conf file you have the choice of picking a core, which is how the emulator tries to run the processor. Normal will interpret things instruction by instruction, and as a result it's a bit more demanding on your machine than other methods. But unless you're running DOSBox on a really old system, you shouldn't see a performance hit. Single is a core that's optimised for older games that are in real mode, but we'll cover that later. If you're running something from a late 70s or early 80s this will probably do the trick. It'll switch back to normal on the fly if it encounters a protective mode game. Auto will pick the right core for the job, most of the time. If you're running a whole pile of different DOS games using the one emulator, this is probably the one you want. And you'll see this setting on a lot of things as it takes the hassle out of core selection. So now that we've got the right core, you need to tell DOSBox what type of processor you're using. Most of the time you can leave this set to auto and it will switch to the correct choice depending upon the game's needs. But if you know that the game needs a specific type of processor architecture in order to function and auto just isn't cutting it for you, you can specify it here. From a slow 386 all the way up to Pentium processors, the most modern type before DOS games were gradually phased out. Most of these things can be set to auto when forgotten about, but there's one important part that most likely can't and that's the cycles count. Cycles are the measurement for the clock speed of a processor and how many cycles it can process in a second. The more cycles it can do per second, the faster it can process instructions. In the past, processors ran at a much slower clock speed than they do now. As research and manufacturing techniques have improved, so has the speed of the processors that we have nowadays. But if you emulate a lot of these games from the past at the current speeds, it's not going to be a fun time. I've demonstrated before with Barbarian how cycle counts make a lot of difference. Yep, that's even less playable than usual and that game's pretty awful as it is. By default, DOSBox will be set to auto which guesses based on the game what speed to set the cycles count to. Unfortunately, when it comes to cycles, auto doesn't always guess correctly, and that results in many games running far too fast. But why do they do this? Well, the reason is that with a lot of these titles, the game's logic and general brain power is tied to a specific speed. Anything higher than that and things start to go wrong with the code. Take TIE Fighter for instance. You can get a smoother experience from the game by setting a higher cycles count, but by doing so you'll trigger an issue where stations won't fire as much as they should, making the game easier or harder based on whether you're defending or attacking the stations in question. So in the cases where auto doesn't work, this turns into a numerical guessing game. Fortunately in DOSBox you can hit control followed by function keys 11 and 12 to increase and decrease respectively the cycle speed in game. This is hit and miss because certain games will look a lot smoother at higher counts until it actually comes to interacting with the world. Then you realise that things aren't quite as they should be and even then some of the underlying stuff might not be working correctly, which you may never notice if you haven't played the game in the past. Fortunately certain forks of DOSBox like DOSBox Pure and launchers like the DOSBox Game Launcher take the guessing out of the cycles count, showing you exactly what era the cycle speed represents. For those who don't use them, the equivalent machines are a search away. It doesn't end there though. If for some reason you want to use the full power of your processor, you can set it to max. This will automatically use 100%, but you can then add a limit parameter followed by a cycles count or a percentage to cap the processing power by a certain amount. You can also specify how many cycles you want to bump up and down with the keyboard shortcut to stop you furiously tapping on keys in order to fine tune things in real time. Early processors also had different ways to utilise memory and what could run where. These were known as memory modes or memory models. Let's talk about them briefly. 
Real mode, extended, protected and long are all forms of memory models that are affected by the processor selection, and DOSBox will helpfully cater to three of these. Long came out after the DOS era, and thus we don't have to worry about it. It's not perfect though, and every so often you'll get an awkwardly coded game that just doesn't want to play ball with automatic switching that the emulator so kindly offers it. Real mode games will want a simple processor, with a low cycles count. If it complains about needing extended memory, you can set that under the DOS subsection of the conf file by setting XMS to true. Protected mode was introduced with the 286 in the early 80s. Auto should again do the trick with this. All this tinkering is usually the exception, not the rule, with most commercial DOS titles already configured correctly, and a number of digital antiquarians hosting either game-compatible comp files or the games themselves with all the configuration legwork done for you. While Windows has been around for over 35 years now, it doesn't support the vast majority of games and applications from its history. DOSBox does with DOS games, and that's why there are so many configuration options in order to get everything running just as it should. Now armed with the right port, the correct graphics and sound setup, and the processor and memory emulation behaving as it should, there's little in the way of you and a fantastic gaming experience. In future, you can expect videos from yours truly looking at just how far you can take said gaming experience, and how the community has gone one step further to provide what some would argue is an even better way to play the game than the original. In the meantime, you can bask in the glory of Might Magic 2, with the correct walking speed. Yeah! Look at it go! Yeah!